So when you're first introduced to integrating x to the power of n, you come across one example where the formula fails, where that method fails. And that is when you have the integral of x to the power of minus 1. Because if you follow the formula through of adding 1 to the power and dividing by the new power, what you end up with is x to the 0 over 0, plus some constant c, of course. But this, of course, is nonsense. Okay, We can't divide by 0. So the method and the rule that we've got breaks down for one particular example. For all other values of n, integrating x to the n by adding 1 to the power and dividing by the new power is perfectly fine. But in this one case, it fails. So what is the result of integrating 1 over x? Can you do it? OK, it's a good question. Well, the answer to can you do it, yes, you can. Uh, but the result at this stage always feels very strange. OK, so the result is that if you integrate 1 over x with respect to x, you actually get the natural logarithm of x. Now, there is a reason also why I have to put the x into modulus signs, okay, which takes the absolute value of the x. Essentially, what you've got to think about here is that when we perform integration, um, we often have limits here because we're working with definite integrals and we can't substitute negative values in to the natural log, okay, because it's just undefined there, whereas this curve 1 over x is defined there. So the curve 1 over x looks like this. So if you were to evaluate it between minus 3 and minus 2, say, we should be able to evaluate that integral. But if we just have log of x, we're going to substitute in log, we're going to have log of minus 3, we're going to have log of minus 2, okay, which we can't evaluate. Whereas if we substitute in minus 3 and we take the modulus of that, that makes the minus 3 positive 3. So these modular signs take the absolute value. So when you substitute them in, you'll have the modulus of minus 3, which is 3, the modulus of minus 2, which is 2, and then you can evaluate your logarithm. So at this point, not only have we got a weird looking result, which I haven't explained where it comes from, but this also might feel like a bit of a contrivance to actually have the modular signs there. So let's explain it. Now, the way to show that this result is correct is actually by starting with y equals the natural log of x and differentiating this um, to show that you get 1 over x. OK, but of course, when I write that down, y equals the natural log of x, although I might not explicitly state it, x has to be greater than 0 in order for that function to exist, OK, because I can't take the log of 0 or a negative value. Now, how do you differentiate this? Well, what happens is that I need to write this in exponential form first. So I am effectively going to e both sides, and I can write that as e to the y is equal to e to the natural log of x, which is just x. So I write go from logarithmic to exponential form. I can then use what's referred to as implicit differentiation, which you may or may not have seen at this point. e to the y differentiates to e to the y dy by dx. And the x differentiates to 1. Implicit differentiation, if you haven't met it at this stage, um, allows you to differentiate implicit equations. So one's not written as y equals some explicit function of x. So functions of that form.
Essentially, if you've got a term that has y involved, you just differentiate like normal and then stick a dy by dx on the end. That is implicit differentiation in a nutshell. Now, to get dy by dx, I am going to divide both sides by e to the y. And of course, what was y? Well, it was log of x. So that's 1 over e to the natural log of x. But what is e to the natural log of x? Well, the e and the natural log are inverse functions of one another. And so we just get 1 over x. So clearly, we can show that y equals log x differentiates to 1 over x. So 1 over x has to integrate to log x. But there is that condition that x had to be greater than 0 in order for you to be able to go from there straight to there. When we are integrating 1 over x, we must get used to putting these modulus signs around the x so that you are clear that the logarithm can only take positive values of x. Okay, because we know 1 over x is defined not just for x is greater than 0, it's defined for anything apart from 0. Okay? So that is how we deal with 1 over x and how we integrate it. So what you see is that when you integrate it between that minus 3 and minus 2, for example... So let's go from minus 3 to minus 2. So we need to put it in a square bracket. We can lose the plus c, minus 3 to minus 2. When we substitute in the minus 2, we're going to get the natural log of just 2, because the modular sign knocks out the minus. And then take away the natural log of substituting in the minus 3, so we get log 3. And then we can use the log law to bring those two together. That's log of two-thirds. Okay? And so there we have um, how we can use 1 over x integrated to the natural log of mod x. Okay? So you must make sure you put the modular signs around the x when you integrate 1 over x in this way.